Perhaps the Bard knows some of my favorites. Unless my taste in music is too antique, of course. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now, our paths cross once more. We have all pined for each other's company, I sense. I cannot imagine otherwise after what we shared. That bond was forged in a crucible that can never be stoked again, Oak Father willing. It is a bond that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. That was more than worth the wait. That was more than worth the wait? Oh, I suppose you didn't mean that literally. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes, and the land is rich with harvests and Bountiful trees. Nature and civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. Ah, my greatest purpose and greatest reward. Those children have been through more than fate had any right to cast at them. And yet they go on as resilient as anything in nature. I impart what knowledge I can to them, yet, in truth, they teach me far more. The land we saved is theirs, and they will cherish it, I'm sure. Thaniel and Oliver shall never want for friends again. As am I. I may age more slowly than most, but... I do believe I've gained some new laughter lines of late. Now, please, tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie, I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see, my charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin, another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. I am all ears. Though I never cared for that phrase. A rather... unsettling image. I am glad you have kept yourself occupied. <laughs> no doubt I'll be able to spin a few yarns for the children from this. Hmm. Thank you. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening. 
As much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now. Unless there was anything else. <laughs> Quite often. They come and go as they please. But with so many playmates to avail of, <laughs> they are far from strangers. They ask after you often. What you did for them will never be forgotten. I can see it in the land all around me. But more importantly, I see it in their faces whenever they visit. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods as far as I'm concerned. I spend half my days in ursine form. The children demand it. I had a score of them taking turns riding upon my back just days ago. <sighs> I'm glad they are so comfortable with the Oak Father's creations. But they must learn that not all are as amiable as I am. A lesson for another time, though. They deserve some joy. As for roaming, that impulse has dwindled, I must admit. Perhaps because I have found where I am meant to be. On occasion, but I prefer not to interfere. Francesca of the High Forest is Archdruid now, and by all accounts, she has proven to be a steady and wise influence. Even Korga may yet find true balance, thanks to her influence. As did I, but somehow I feel like I no longer need to roam. That I have found something worthy laying roots for. Amazing what can be discovered about oneself, even at a ripe old age. By all means. Your embrace makes me feel safer than any armor could. Before you go, I have something for you. Just a little keepsake, really. Do you remember how I told you I like to whittle? I made this. <laughs> Ducks are my favorite, but I thought they were particularly fitting in this case. They are migratory birds, of course, traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Yet, they always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. Just a token to remember me by. <laughs> now, I've taken up enough of your time. Go on, enjoy the festivities. We can speak again later. Well, now, you can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. <laughs> ah, how nice to be understood again. I have spent the past months bickering with builders and bankers, all to restore the city exactly as it was. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers. Same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. An empty throne. Thanks to you. The city will not be long in burying it. Baldurians simply... 
Get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness. Civic spirit. Plain stupidity. Perhaps all three. But nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. They might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Ah, oh, there is still much to do. People to house. A Harper network to rebuild. I may have little love for this city, but so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. Ah, uh, but I see the flush in your cheeks when I speak of family. Perhaps you mean to start one of your own? Oh, I don't want to watch over a blood match where the jewel is called me Auntie. Just be careful, Bowspawn. All right, Baal child. It is true you are no longer what you were. You have done well for yourself, for all your travels. I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Ah, oh, sentiment. With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. I fear I am becoming accustomed to the taste of some fed plants. Oh, hello. Let me guess, you've got some suggestions about the music choice. You have no idea who I am, do you? I thought Withers might have set the stage a little. I owe him a favor, one he is eternally invoking. I thought honoring the worthy was a fair price to pay for Withers to pull me out of the fugue plane. <sighs> Alas, one purgatory to another. Languishing in obscurity. Cyric knew what he was doing when he punished me for that song, the prick. Before I was banished to the fugue plane, I had song prayers coming out the proverbial ears. Guess how many I get now? None. Musical prayers were once offered to Melil, Lord of Song. A minor deity whose worship faded after offending the trickster god Cyric. I'm washed up, I'm afraid. You... You know? <laughs> You're bloody right! It is an honor! Finally! The scribe picks an adventurer of substance, of culture! What can I do you for? Your wish is my... etc. What song do you want? Fantastic! 
fantastic idea. It'll suit the whole affair perfectly. Look at this place. At us! This is the best party I've ever been to! Other reunions to which I was not. Right, you. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakarios save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? Well done. Despite my old friend's genius, he'd have blown himself up long ago if not for the help of friends like you and I. You ought to come visit myself and Gail when you're able, if you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta, darling. Do let me know if you spot a cosy corner near the fire for me, won't you? what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gail Decarius of Blackstaff Academy, educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. A pleasure to remake your acquaintance. That was quite lovely. I'm glad you're as pleased to see me as I am you. I have to say, I'm quite grateful to just be Gale for the evening. I fear my students find me somewhat intimidating due to my uh, explosive former reputation. I seem to put the fear of the gods into them, or the fear of Mistra, to be more specific. She sought me out. Not long after, we went our separate ways and assured me neither she nor the orb should pose me any threat in the future. Of course, it's still in there. A constant reminder of my former hubris and a surprisingly effective means of keeping my more disobedient students in line. Perhaps a tad too effective. But I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. Illusory magic has the power to confound the senses, to render the impossible into reality and to allow expression of that most magical attribute of all, imagination. Had you the decades to spare, I think you'd prove quite adept at it, 
as you did in that first lesson I taught you. It was at that moment, the weave connecting us, that I realized how much your friendship had come to mean to me, as it still does. You were, of course, indulging me in submitting to such a lesson. Teaching you was hardly an effort at all. Not like my present cohort of apprentices. Oh, they try their best, of course. And they can manage to stay awake. The cheek of them. Nothing a well-placed swipe from Tara can't fix, though. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? And I couldn't be happier for you. A fitting reward for the sacrifices you made in getting here. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'd be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. Well, I, for one, can't wait. And I say with some confidence, neither can they. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Uh, my apologies, Tara. That would be our tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months. But I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, in the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now. We have time enough to come. Oh, my knees are aching terribly. Must mean rain. Hopefully not during the party. This is... nice. Yes. I think that's the right word for it. Ah, cool, fresh air. By the living gods, I need it. <laughs> 